Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to merge multiple exposures of a scene into a single image to create a high dynamic range or HDR image. In this example, I will select these three images. They were each taken one stop apart, but you can merge more or fewer images together depending on how many exposures are needed to capture the entire dynamic range of the scene. For best results, let's move to the Develop module and I'll enable Auto Sync. Then in the Lens Correction panel, I'll want to make sure to remove chromatic aberration and enable Profile Corrections. Then we can disable the Auto Sync. Then I'll tap G to return to the grid view, and I'll choose Photo, Photo Merge, and HDR, or we can use the shortcut Control H on either Mac or Windows. We can expand the HDR Merge Preview to make it larger, but the preview does have a maximum size of 2048 pixels. Auto Align is on by default, and it will align the images if there was camera movement between the sequence of exposures, for example, if the images were taken without a tripod. It will also automatically crop uneven edges after aligning the exposures. Enabling Auto Sync will automatically enhance the combined exposures. This is the same as using the Auto button in the Develop module. These changes are non-destructive and they can be refined or removed from the resulting HDR file without any loss of quality. If there was movement within the photo between the sequence of images, moving water or blowing leaves or people walking, for example, we can enable DeGhost and choose an amount. Deghosting will identify the areas that changed between images, and instead of combining the information from all of the source images, which may cause a blurring or ghosting of the area, it will select and use the information from only one exposure for that area. We can view these areas by enabling the Show Ghost Overlay, and we can toggle on and off its visibility by tapping the O key. If the overlay is difficult to see, you can add the Shift key and tap O, and that will cycle through the four different overlay colors. We can enable Create Stack to automatically stack the source and resulting HDR image, putting the newly rendered HDR image at the top of the stack. All right, let's go ahead and apply the merge. We can watch the progress bar in the upper left, but Photo Merge runs in the background so that you can also continue working while it's processing. In fact, if you want to bypass the Photo Merge dialog and create an HDR image based on the last used settings, you can select your source images and choose Option Shift H on Mac or Alt Shift H on Windows. All right, here is the newly created 16-bit floating point HDR image. We can see that this is a raw file, in this case a DNG, and that the source images have been stacked with the original. I'll click on the 4 in order to expand the stack. Lightroom Classic also adds a hyphen HDR to the end of the file name. This makes it easy to quickly find all of our HDR files if we use the text filter, change it to file name, and then enter in HDR. Now, typically, I don't make adjustments other than removing the chromatic aberration and enabling lens profile corrections to the individual exposures before merging them because not all of the adjustments carry over to the merged file. Unfortunately, this includes the selective corrections made with the masking tools. Now, let's move over to the Develop module. And in the Basic panel, we can see the auto adjustments that were already applied but of course we can refine those and make whatever adjustments we need to. One thing that I want to point out is that the exposure values now have a much greater range from negative 10 to positive 10. Okay, I'll double click to reset that and let's tap G to move back to the grid view. If we had made adjustments such as changing the treatment, here I'll select this image and then choose black and white, and we wanted that adjustment to be applied to the other images when we create the HDR, because changing the treatment is one of the adjustments that can be carried over, just make sure that the image that has the adjustment is the most selected image, meaning that it's the one that's highlighted 
before you choose Photo Merge. All right, I'm going to select that, and to change the treatment back to color, I'll tap the V key. If we have a lot of HDR images that we want to batch process, we can select one set of images and create the first HDR image using the settings that we want to apply to all of the other HDR images that we want to create using the batch process. In this example, I'm simply going to use the settings from the previously created HDR. And I've already removed the chromatic aberration and enabled profile corrections for all of these images. Then I'll choose the Photo menu, and then Stacking, and I'll group these into a stack. In order to speed up the workflow, I'll select the next set and use Command-G on Mac, or we could use Control-G on Windows. Then we can select all of the stacks and choose Photo, Photo Merge, and then HDR. We can see in the progress bar that the four HDR images are being created, and I'll just speed up the recording here so that we can see the results. I'll quickly select them, and then tap the N key to go to Survey View, and there are our four newly created HDR images. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.